I want to start out over the next few weeks talking about the sower sows the word. And if you've been here any time at all, or Andrew Walmax, you've heard that. Uh, the first time I heard that was in 1992 in England. And I remember going on the first Grace and Faith Conference in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. We got to minister. We got to lead people to Jesus. Uh, and I remember he was teaching the sower sows the word. How many know that scripture that we've got there in Mark chapter 4, Matthew 13? But I remember hearing this and listening, and I started to cry. Next thing I know, I'm feeling these tears come down my eyes. I said, Dennis, people are watching, man. What are you doing? You big sissy, why are you crying? But God was doing an overhaul of my heart. Amen. How many know the word, you can read it, and then you can really read it and listen to it to where it affects your heart? Exactly. And it needed to, and I needed to be overhauled, and it was happening to me sitting there listening to that. So the word needs to take an effect even today and affect your heart. Or we're just playing games, coming to church, what's for, right? Uh, but this is called the condition of your heart determines your crop. How many can almost look at somebody, or let's say it this way, talk to them for not too long a period of time and know what kind of crop they got coming up? Okay, good, good or bad. What you are planting, what are you planting would be one question I have for you. And is it what you want to grow? So have what you've been planting in your heart, is that what you, the crop you've been wanting? And if it's not, are we going to do something about it? We're going to change that. Fearful seeds produce fearful fruit. Peaceful seeds produce peaceful fruit. How many need some peace fruit coming on here lately? Ruling and reigning in your heart. Can I watch and listen to fear-based movies or listen to fear-based pods, news, and not get that fruit? Come on, talk to me here now. See, and we maybe can act like it, or I'll watch this movie here. I've got to determine what I'm watching is coming in and it's affecting my heart. Am I determining who the gatekeeper my heart is by most of what I'm meditating, listening to, or pondering on? Come on. And so you, you, sometimes you got to do a full-blown uh, ejection of the gatekeeper and switch him out. Anybody been there? So what's the condition of yours? What stirs you up? What makes you afraid or angry? See, these are all lights on the dash that represent something's happening in your heart that I need to do something about. Myrna will verify this for us. There are more neurons in your heart than in your brain. That... So there's a lot going on there. Come on. Uh, why can't we just pray? Not, not have to read the word. Because your reading of the word, your fellowship and time with God affects what you pray. <laughs> right? So, no, you have a lot of hard dirt, rocks, and thorns hindering the heart flow. How many want to get rid of a few of the distractions, the hardening of hearts? We've got to get rid of that so we can move ahead. When you see nice flowers or beautiful trees, they are sown on purpose. How many know that rarely do you see real nice flowers, roses, apple trees growing on their own? They're planted on purpose, right? And weeds, what are they? You know, before we mow, before you, we mow this yard every week, there's these new kind of weeds. I don't know what they're called, but they're from the devil. Okay? And we, we got to do something about it on purpose to make a difference. Come on. So we put down different things. How, how many have ever heard of things called pre-emergence? You know, uh, how many have ever heard of miracle grow? And that fertilizer you put down to help. But if you put down pre-emergence, it kills stuff before you see it. 
that lets you know that there are seeds there that have been planted possibly even a long time ago that's looking for something to allow it to come up. But if I deal with it and I put some pre-emergence down, put God's word down, says no, no more fear. That that happened to me or that situation with my father or mother many years ago, I'm going to snuff that out. It's, we're putting that down. So it's not going to affect me, right? So there's some things you have to do in advance. I don't know how many have got nice yards and keep stuff going, but you got to put stuff down before the weeds come. After the weeds come, Dan, are we in trouble a little bit? <laughs> so I'm going to look at this out of Mark chapter 4, starting with about verse 2. And how many know there's four types of soil? We all should know that. Then he taught them many things by parables and said them in his teaching. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. The birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up, choked it out, and yielded no crop. But other seed fell on some good ground. Come on, good ground. And yielded a crop that sprang up, increased the product, and produced some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100-fold. How many like the sound of 100-fold? Come on. I used to think, give me 99-fold, Lord, because it seemed like uh, the enemy came after the 100-fold people. So I said, just give me 99. Uh, I don't have to mess with that, right? <laughs> but when he was alone, well, let me, let me read this. Nine said to them, do you not understand? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Come on, ears. But he, when he was alone, those around him of the twelve, asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those on the outside, all these things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all parables? And the sower sows the word. And I want to say some, interject some things there. This is one of the foundational parables. And so if you don't get this parable, you're going to have problems with other parables that he's sharing there. So we need to know this. We need to understand this. Uh, this is a key parable. I also want to say this. The word given in parables is not hidden from God's children, but for them. And those on the outside that don't have the spirit won't understand them. So he's giving these in parables. He's hiding them for you. So you'll get them. So you'll receive from them. How many like the, that idea? Come on. Now, 15, we're going to break it down a little bit more. And these are the ones by the wayside or the path. How many have ever walked, you know, down a trail and there was a hardened path that didn't have much on it because so many people walked on it, right? Uh, where the word was sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately, takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So we've got this first type. The word sown... But the birds get it before people even get a chance to do much with it. How many know the enemy's there to snatch up the seed that's sown? Now, the determination of where your heart is right now determines whether he can just snatch it right out or not. Right? Now, verse 16 says this. These likewise are the ones sown on the stony ground who when... They hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. How many have seen those kind of people? Woohoo, man, I'm excited about this. And they have no root in themselves and only endure for a time. Afterward, 
When tribulation and persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now, why does tribulation and persecution come? For the word's sake. See, because if the word gets planted in you, it's going to produce fruit and fruit that remains. So the enemy is coming by here to steal it before it gets planted. So what are you going to do about that? Comes along. So if you, if you see tribulation and persecution coming, you've got to say, no, -uh, not getting my word. I'm protecting it. I'm going to meditate on it. But, and so they endure for a time. Afterward, tribulation, persecution arise for the world's sake. Immediately they stumble. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of other things enter in and choke the word, and they become unfruitful. I mean, there's a lot of people we've connected. We've got the home groups. We've got to come to church. Man, they were so excited at first. But the cares of this world, are they still out there right now? I mean, I don't know that I've seen it as crazy as it is in the world right now to distract people, to pull them away. The latest schemes to draw people off. Come on. And, and so I can't, I have to purpose that I'm going to get this word planted and I'm not going to be, allow these things, these cares to come along and steal. You got to know what they are. You got to know when they're coming. And say no, right? Because they want to choke. They, they want to keep you unfruitful, right? Seatfulness of the riches. Now I'm going to read verse 20. But these are the ones sown on the good ground. Everybody say good ground with me. And we'll discuss what good ground is. Also he said to them, is a lamp brought out to be under a basket? What do you guys set a lamp for? Come on, you want to see, right? So you don't put it under a basket or under a bed. It's to be set on a lampstand. You guys are lights, and you need to be set on lampstands so it can be seen and people see the word coming forth from you. Uh, there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret that should not come to light. Seeing more and more of this happen right now. If anyone has ears to hear, got any of those people here today? Let him hear. Let him hear. Come on. Ears to hear. Let him hear. Verse 24. And he said to them, take heed what you hear. I'm just going to stop there for a second. This week, take heed what you hear, what you watch, what you ponder, what you meditate on. Because you are allowing things to be planted or actually fertilize things that have been there that need to go down, need to be choked out. Anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Whoever has, to him more will be given. To whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. How many know if you're dumb, you get dumber? If you are pulling on God's word, if you are allowing God's word to be planted and get roots, fertilize it, the more you have, the more you will be given. How many are needing and looking for some more of God's word being fruitful in their lives? I mean, it lays it out here, but we get distracted. We let the cares of this world pull on us. I've never seen cares of the world like we've seen over the last three years affect what's going on. We are in the fight of our lives right now. The election of our lives is going on right now that decides things. And I'm hoping that it's going to turn out for the best, for the kingdom. But once that happens, are we going to then say, shit, it's over, we don't have to do anything? No, it's time to dig in, man. Get the gospel rooted more than we've ever seen before. 
But take heed what you hear. So everything that I'm hearing, watching, looking at, I need to take heed. Is that something I want the crop of in my life, in my heart? I mean, everything you're listening to, everything you're pondering on, looking at this week, do you want the crop of that going on in your heart that's going to be producing fruit that everybody sees, right? I want to hear, let him hear. I want to look here. It's determined by what you measure. If I want this level of word going on in my life, I've determined the measure that I'm going to get back to me. See, in God's kingdom, you get more than what you sow. You get more. You get more of what you meditate on. It's set up, man. If you plant this, you're going to get more of it. So if it's something bad, man, you, you not only won't want this, but you want to get rid of it. Because it turns into, it turns into increase. Just, just to see, right? So I've got to take the stuff I don't want in there, I've let and get in there, have caused strongholds over the years. I've got to start taking that level down to nothing. So it can't be planting any fruit. And I've got to start increasing on the promises of the word. I've got to start imagination and seeing myself prosper and bear much fruit. Fear has to not only go down to this, but needs to be eradicated. Everybody in here has fears from your past, from things that are going on. What if somebody knows? What if they hear about? Fear's got to be dealt with. The more you allow fear the more you get. To he who has, more will be given. But the more words you get, the more words you're going to get. The more you're going to see. The more revelation you get, the more revelation you're going to get given to you. Right? So if you say, hey man, I don't need that word. I don't need to spend time with the Lord. Well, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> you say, thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for giving me revelation. Amen. Don't be spiritually stupid. Okay? Right? <laughs> okay. So if God gives you a revelation... Uh, for example, I got a revelation uh, some years ago on a Kenya trip. And we're sitting in the, I think Lise was there too. We're sitting in the, it was like the, what do they call those first class places? Uh, you go and sit in when you're waiting for your plane. Wow. Wet lounge, yeah. yeah. And you usually got to be top mileage. Well, this was Kenya and we got dumped on a flight and this was low, low scale. But we're just getting a revelation that I was reading out of Hebrews chapter 10. I think it's verse 26. And, and it talks about uh, when you, uh, the Hebrews of, of the word of the Bible, verse 26, it talks about that when you are meditating, those guys start, let, let me just pull it up and read it. That way we'll have it exactly what we need to, for it to have here. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews. Hebrews 4. That's not that. in the TPT. I'm going to do it the best I can from my memory here. How many know that fear tries to come in and tries to steal from us? Okay. Yeah. And it says, it talks about sin and then it talks about the Hebrews, and in the book of Hebrews, the people that are there 
were people that were turning away from God and doing more sacrifices. And he was warning them, there's only one sacrifice. And that's the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. So if you are trusting in the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, you can't go on sinning willfully in the knowledge of the truth. See, if you, you go on sinning willfully in knowledge of the truth, there were, no longer remains a sacrifice for your sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment. Okay? So if I'm waiting, anybody expecting a certain judgment? Okay, and what he was saying to these guys here as this revelation was coming is that Jesus was the one sacrifice. You've got to trust in him. So you don't look and go back to sacrificing bulls and goats and animals to try to get back in good. That's done. It's over with. Now you've got to trust in the one sacrifice, which is the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. How many are going back to the law? Nobody? How many are going to trust in what Jesus did through his death, burial, and resurrection to make us in right standing with him? Now, I want to look, look at this just a little further. Matthew 13. And this repeats part of what we had there and said. It says, For he who has to him more will be given. And for he who has an abundance to whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. So, once again, we're going to explain this and look at this just a little bit deeper. Am I getting more out of God's word? Am I understanding it? Because I'll get an abundance of it. I'll get abundance of revelation as we look at this. And then it goes on here to say, He has will be taken away, will become dumb and dumber. And that's my added to that. Therefore I speak to you in parables, because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear. So Jesus brought up parables. So as you're reading a parable and you're a believer, you need to have an expectation that you're going to get revelation from that. Is that right? And then it goes on here to say, And in them the prophecy of Isaiah fulfilled, saying, Hearing you will hear and not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of the people have grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing. And their eyes, they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn. Now, I've always wondered about this here. You know, why wouldn't you want them to hear and turn? Okay? So, he's made it almost like, how many remember Pharaoh? He kept doing things. Miracles kept happening. And the guy's heart got harder and harder. So it's almost like separating people that aren't going to believe the word. And it's like their heart gets hardened until they either quit, break. How many have ever got, come to the end of their selves? You, whatever you were going through, you came to the end of yourself and you're finally to the bottom like we read, I believe, last week where the prodigal son started looking at the pig slop he was feeding the pigs and came to the end of himself. See, there's a principle in here that people that aren't saved need to come to their end of themselves. So it's not like God's going to give them a revelation of one thing. He wants them to come to the end of themselves. Don't be a person, now that you are a believer, to have to come to the end of yourself again. Continue to receive the revelation that God has given you uh, yeah. Now, in, in verse 15, the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes, they have closed. Now, I'm, I'm going to be careful how I do this, but politically speaking, right now, there's a lot of people that have hardened hearts. And things being done right in front of them. You would think that our nation going backwards, gas prices going up, not being able to get computer parts, uh, people losing their jobs. I mean, all these things that have come with what's happened with this last administration, there are still people that are blind. Oh, yeah, very blind. 
Are you, you getting what I'm saying? They're like, oh, duh. You know, I, I mean, you can list the things that were done bad by this administration. The list is so long of bad things. It's like, are you dumb and blind not seeing this? But this is the principle that's being shown here. That people's hard, heart gets harder. They become blinder as these things go on. And so we got to pray, God, that they'll know the truth and the truth will make them free. And you are those people that bear the truth. So is he waiting for you guys to the people you have in your family and friends to speak the truth out? I don't want to get into a lot of different areas uh, of this, but I'm just saying, God, are there areas that I'm still blind? Are there areas I'm not seeing that you're exposing in this hour. Because I, I, I tell you, it just, it's just amazing how things get in and start to dull. I don't, let's look at the hardened soil, thorny soil, come on, the rocky soil, and let's look at the good soil. The good soil, what is the difference between those and the three others? Right? But primarily, the good soil is lack of all those other bad things. Yeah, no rocks. So, you, if you got a few rocks, it's time to start picking them out. Yep. Deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this world have been affecting you. No, I got to remove those rocks here. The thorns, come on, man. How many are ready to start uprooting, pulling thorns out? Okay. Getting clear. How many have. Let their heart get hardened, and it's trying, it might even be time to go get the tiller guy. Boom, 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 and start tilling up the hard ground. And it's going to be a bit of pain for a while. It's going to be painful for a minute. Now, I say this to you because every one of you here has areas that you enter into that you allow to come in your heart that are only going to produce bad fruit. Yeah. And somehow we think, well... I could handle that bad fruit from a while. Woohoo! Can you? No, not really. Remember, if you get this, you're going to get more of it. The more you have, the more you're going to get. More blindness. So I've got to determine what God's Word says, and am I allowing God's Word to dominate? Am I allowing it to grow good fruit? Am I allowing it to increase fruitfulness? I'm asking this rhetorically, but has anybody here got fears from the past that still try to come up? Okay, I mean, you don't have to raise your hand because I know everybody here should have that. So as those come up, how many are willing to say, Lord, help me deal with this? Because living with fear is not God's plan. Are you with me? And so when I see it come up, Am I ready to go to the roots and do what it takes to get rid of it? Am I ready to say, okay, God, I, I see that. I see that fear that came up there. I don't want that anymore. So number one, I start applying all the scriptures that pertain that. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of what? His power, His love, and His sound mind. So God, I thank you for your power, your love, and His sound mind. I'm going to meditate on that. That's what you've given me. So today, I'm just going to let it meditate. Tomorrow, I'm just going to let it, your power, your love, and sound mind, I'm going to let that dominate me until the keeper of my heart said, fear, you got to go. Fear of what other people think has to go. You know, there's some people that can walk into a room like my wife and they can just walk up to almost anybody and just make them feel comfortable, encourage them. And then there's a lot of us that walk in a room and we're kind of yeah. sorting it out. Who are these people, you know? Uh, what are they thinking about me? What do I need to do to act like I know more than them? And, and, and I'm, I'm saying all that to say these are rocks, thorns, and things that have got in 
that it's time, I, not Roto-Rooter, but the guy with the rooter, you know, the garden tiller, yeah, needs to come in and, and gut me. Come on, gut me, Mick, cut me, cut me, Mick. Now, who knows what I'm saying? So, like that scripture I just read out of 10... 26, if we go on willfully sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for your sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment. So if, if I've got that here, how many here sin accidentally? And how many here sin willfully? So no, yeah. And... and I, 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 David, we, we sinned willfully, didn't we? We made a choice, and we're going to do it, and that's what we did, right? But what I'm trying to say with this, I've received the knowledge of the truth, the Scripture says, and yet I've sinned after having it? I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Come on now. It says there no longer reigns a sacrifice, as we just explained it a minute ago. The sacrifice was Christ Jesus. He was once and for all. Everybody say once and for all. He was there. He was, it's done. It's over. And so I don't have to go back and get a sacrifice for my sins anymore. The sacrifice that I got was in Jesus and it's once and for all, right? So once I've got that sacrifice settled and down, God's not holding my sin against me anymore. But I'll hold it against me. You'll hold it against you. Other people you know will hold it against you, right? So what I've got to do is start uprooting. Pulling out. Uh, Jane came here to help us this week. Uh, and she's helping us clean our garage. How many have had years of stuff in your house, in your garage, and... Uh, and there's an uprooting going on. There's a cleansing. So what the thing is, okay, I got rid of the junk, the roots, the bad stuff. Now what am I going to put back? Don't do it. I, I mean, now it's got to be, I want to put stuff that's going to have a fruitful life, a fruitful time. Being able to walk out there and just see my motorcycle or my car, you, you know. And so I, I'm, I'm telling you all this because it's time to allow the Spirit of God to start revealing what's going on in our heart. And I'm ready to start replacing. I'm ready to start uprooting strongholds that have been there. And they're, they're called strongholds because they're a house made of thoughts that you've allowed to come in. And so now it's time to start removing that. Sometimes it takes piece by piece, those house made of thoughts. But I've got to start uprooting them and replacing them. What does God's word say that's opposite of what's been going on in my heart? Can I get to the place where there's Good soil. I've removed the rocks, the thorns, the hardness, and I've got just good soil, and I'm planting God's word, and there's crop after crop of good fruit. Amen. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Yes. So when are we going to get started? <laughs> so, Father, I just thank you for this group of people, and I just pray that you start showing us our own heart. God, it starts with attitudes. God, show me my attitudes that aren't your attitudes. Help me to start uprooting those, pulling them out. God, I'm just looking for good soil so that when the Word of God, the seed of the Word of God gets planted, I'm going to have only good, only good fruit, only good flowers, only good things, God, that's going to come from me. Fears that have been there for years. What do other people think? You are getting uprooted. God, I pray that the things that I do, I'm doing them out of the right motives, your motives. Because you care for people, God, and that's why I need to be doing things. Oh, I heard the word rocks of gold. You know, there's some people that you have got gold 
<laughs> rocks of gold that God has set in there. And if you notice, uh, God says gold is good. God, I thank it that I, I, I'm thinking of the rivers and the brooks that are flowing, constantly cleaning. God, I thank you that I'm allowing the water of your word just to flow through my heart and uproot. There's some people here, and you are told things even at a young age. You'll never be any good. I don't know who that is, but that was a lie that got planted, and today it's getting uprooted in Jesus' name. God, I am good because of you. <laughs> You're in me. So I thank you, Father, for working through me in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, shandabakiri ama, kuradaraba. Ooh, God, I, now I just want you to imagine seeing good fruit, seeing good attitudes coming out of you. Instead of trying to protect yourself, which is what a lot of us do, God, I just say, you protect me, Lord. You're the one that causes me to be able to go and encourage people, not in fear of what they might say, God, because you say this about me. You have anointed me, called me your son. Jesus' name. Mm. Somebody's shoulder, back, neck has been...